The Clovis burial site in Montana answers questions about early humans pre-Ice Age. This is by Texas A&M University. Scientists have shown that at the Anzic site in Montana, the only known Clovis burial site, the skeletal remains of a young child and the antler and stone artifacts found there were buried at the same time, raising new questions about the early inhabitants of North America. Scientists have shown that the Aztec site in Montana, the only known Clovis burial site, skeletal remains of the young child and antler and stone artifacts, Michael Waters, director of Center for the Study of the First Americans and colleagues from the University of Oxford and Stanford uh, Research in Colorado, have their work published in the current issue of PNAS, Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences. The main focus of the team's research center on properly dating the Anzic site, which is named after the family who owned the land. The site was discovered in 1968 by construction workers who found the human remains and stone tools, which include Clovis spear points and antler tools. It's the only known Clovis burial site and is associated with Clovis stones and antler artifacts. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. So up to now, it's the only Clovis burial site that has been found. Uh, the, uh, as Water explains, one thing that has always been a problem has been the accurate dating of the human remains from the site. The human remains yielded a younger age that was not in agreement with the ages from the antler artifacts, which dated older than the human remains. If the human remains and Clovis artifacts were contemporaneous, they should be the same age. So to resolve the issue, the team used a process called specific amino acid radiocarbon dating, which allows a specific amino acid, in this case, hydroxyproline, to be isolated from the human bones. And Waters adds, this amino acid could only have come from the human skeleton and could not be contaminated. The other previous ages suffered from some sort of contamination, but with this new method, we got very accurate and secure ages for the human remains based on dating hydroxyproline. As a test, we also redated the antler artifacts using this technique. The results prove that both the human remains and antler Clovis artifacts are of the same date. The human remains and Clovis artifacts can now be confidently shown to be the same age and dated between 12,725 to 12,900 years ago, Water says. This is right in the middle to the end of the Clovis time period, which ranges from 13,000 to 12,700 years ago. He said this is important because we have resolved the dating issues at the site. Some researchers had argued that the human remains were not Clovis and were younger than the Clovis artifacts based on the earlier radiocarbon dates. We have shown that they are in fact the same age and confirmed that the Anzic site represents a Clovis burial. While not the earliest inhabitants of the Americas, Clovis is the first widespread prehistoric culture at first appeared, that first appeared 30,000 years ago. Clovis originated south of the large ice sheets that covered Canada and that time, at that time and are the direct descendants of the earliest people who arrived in the New World about 15,000 years ago. Clovis people fashioned their stone spear tips with grooved or fluted bases they invented the Clovis point, which is a spear-shaped weapon made of stone that is found in Texas and other portions of the United States and northern Mexico, and these weapons were used to hunt animals. The researchers say the findings will also help geneticists in their estimates of the timing of the peopling of the Americas because the ANZIC genome is critical to understanding early settlements and the origin of modern native peoples. 
This was from Texas A&M University. It's on Science Daily. And about the Clovis culture, the post-Ice Age life in Americas, about 17 and a half thousand years ago, there was dramatic abrupt warming that brought the Ice Age to a close. Uh, many believe it could have been the comet impact that took place about 13,000 years ago and uh, that struck all the world. They found fragments of this comet all over the world. So beginning about 16,000 years ago, the indigenous people inhabiting the Chukchi Peninsula at the shores of Chukchi Sea, Bering Sea region of the Arctic Ocean, migrated from Asia to North America, bringing a Beringian maritime exodus. This was done by paddling canoes over the kelp forests of the Pacific, which contained all of the plants and animals they needed to in order to survive. So the entire journey was always at sea level in essentially the same coastal environment. These boats started out as crude dugouts, but eventually became much more refined and streamlined vehicles like those pictured here. And in this way, the ancient explorers were able to systematically settle the entire world rapidly, trailblazing from the Bering Land Bridge all the way to Patagonia. And they used the riverways. Within a hundred generations, the Native Americans completely colonized everything from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego, but rather than dividing up nationally, they established regional types such as peoples of the Arctic, peoples of the tundra, peoples of the Great Lakes, peoples of the Great Plains, peoples of the Plateau, and so on and so forth, as one moves further south. As part of this, many people moved inland to stop hunting seals and to start hunting mammoths instead. So from 15,000 to 13,500 years ago, the megafauna were all nearly hunted to extinction with bone-tipped spears. Then by 13,500 years ago, rock-tipped spears had replaced them, ushering in the American Stone Age. And along with this, land-based immigration and emigration also began about 12,600 years ago, when an open corridor through the ice-covered North America Arctic allowed the stone people to walk to the new world from the old world and vice versa. Now, at the, age, at the end of the ice, last ice age, what is now Canada, America, and Mexico was all Clovis country to the people of the First Nations. In line with this, the archaic wave of land migrations occurred during the Younger Dryas, which was a period of rapid cooling in the late Pleistocene from 12,800 to 11,500 years ago. So prehistoric people spread far and wide. And by the end of this period, there were populations of hunter-gatherers from coast to coast and all the way down to South America. What happened was the nomadic Chukchi gradually evolved into the Inuit and the Navajo and so on and so forth as time went on, giving rise to one tribe after another after another. So by 10,000 years ago, buffalo beef jerky had become a staple part of the barter system in the Great Plains of ancient America which was part of a trade network with the Plateau and Great Lakes people, linking the extensive intercontinental economy of the entire New World. And in line with this, the indigenous people continued to use the Atlatl well into the Common Era. This was a spear-throwing stick that allowed Native Americans to achieve the greatest accuracy at the longest distances possible in their day and age. In Central America, the Aztecs even used the atlatl to fish with, and in fact, the word is an Aztec term meaning water thrower, but they were also used to hunt prey on land. This technology was central to the Clovis culture of the earliest Stone Age Paleo-Indians, and it continued to be used for millennia as people spanning the New World. Their flint-tipped bamboo spears could be hurled towards something as a top speed of around 100 miles an hour. So the atlatl was an absolutely lethal Stone Age tool that was critical to their overall survival. In other words, it could run faster than the fastest land animal could uh, run away. Now, as uh, said before, there was a shift from Bone Age to Stone Age spearheads around 14,000 years ago. It gave rise to what is known in academia as the Clovis Points, the Clovis spears, which are incredibly sharp, fluted, bi-level flint blades 
and these were used in conjunction with the spear throwing at lateral crooks. One expert says, since it takes a great deal of force to hurdle one of the spears, the hunters all had very muscular right arms and left legs. They would all fling the projectile weapon with their arms and then land on their left legs, thus producing a normalized asymmetrical male physique that became sought after. Think about it, they had already wiped out the megafauna with the technology they had arrived with from Asia, but they still kept innovating to create the oldest invention in America. Even though the Stone Age began much earlier in Europe, it happened a lot later in North America. But it was important at that time and place for those indigenous people. Technological revolutions are always major game changers for anyone involved. The thing is that this was long before the days of Indians on horseback with bows and arrows. In many ways, life was just beginning for them. So society was kind of rebuilt from scratch in the new world at the end of the Ice Age. And spear throwing technology served them well for millennia. Native Americans also began forming new languages and naming the children things like Chasing Bear, an Apache woman that I know. Uh, point is that the new world was so much different from the old world, but yet so similar at the same time. One instance is people still gathered around fires to tell stories, just like they have for hundreds of thousands of years in other areas. The problem was that the new world was still very much dangerous and foreboding place 15,000 years ago. So when people first arrived in the heart of North America, they had to live among a whole host of wild animals. And to make matters worse, many of these creatures were massive beasts. They used to be dire wolves, saber-toothed tigers, woolly mammoths, plus giant beavers, giant bears, giant sloths. Still, the Native Americans were determined to get themselves established, so they gradually killed off the competition in the area. The largest, most intimidating was uh, the monster subsequently uh, treated as such. The Paleo Indians, though, were not intentionally trying to dominate nature. They just wanted to, their children to be safe. But things got out of hand when the, and the megafauna was all driven to extinction. However, there were spiritual, they were very spiritual people. Of course, 13,500 years ago, the Clovis culture was still based on animalistic, uh, animistic shamanism, but that time, by that time, people had already colonized the Yucatan Peninsula and the forest dwelling clans would bury the remains of the most important people in special caves that were deemed to be sacred sites. When one woman in her 20s died, her remains were taken 40 miles away and interned in a cave half a mile away from the nearest entrance at a time when sea levels were hundreds of feet lower than they are now. All the rest of the water was still locked up as ice at the, at the poles. Regardless, back then, shamans would venture all the way to the center of the cave to consume psychotropics and commune with the spirit world. And these members of society were just as important as the chief, who was often a medicine man himself. In the end, antiquity began to give way to modernity, and the widespread Clovis culture was replaced by several more localized regional societies from the Younger Dryas onward. Post-Clovis cultures include the Folsom tradition, Plainview, Gosham, Ganey, Suwanee, Simpson, Cumberland, and Redstone. Each of these derive directly from the Clovis culture, in some cases differing only in the length of the fluting on their projectile points, their spears. Still, the Clovis people are the direct ancestors of roughly 80% of all living Native American populations in North and South America, with the remainder descending from ancients who entered in larger waves of migration. So a decline in the availability of megafauna combined with an overall increase in a more sedentary human population led to local differentiation of lithic processes and products across the Americas. After this, Clovis-style fluted points were replaced by other fluted point traditions with an essentially in uninterrupted sequence cr across North and Central America. An effectively continuous cultural adaptation proceeds from the Clovis period through the ensuing Middle and Late Paleo-Indian periods. And with this, a millennium and a half long cold shock affected many parts of the world, including North America. It was triggered by a vast amount of meltwater 
from Lake Agassiz, which emptied into the North Atlantic, thus disrupting the thermal haline circulation and dis disturbing the local food chains. So the end of the Ice Age and the beginning of the Stone Age in the Americas was a time of great upheaval that broke apart society itself. As the millennia came and went, so too did the major cities like Caral around 5,000 years ago, Teotihuacan around 2,000 years ago, and Cahokia uh, around 1,000 years ago. During the time of the last of those great cities, the Scandinavians and Polynesians came to North and South America, respectively. Then, around 500 years ago, the Spaniards arrived to convert everyone in the New World. At that point, everything completely changed for the worse. Finally, the British invaded, and the rest is history. It's by Joshua, Sean, Michael, and uh, I'll leave links below for you for this. Also on Science Daily. Thank you for your support. Please leave your comments. Thank you.